In this video, I will review reaction kinetics and explain how our bodies use enzymes, which are biological catalysts, to speed up the rate of a reaction. I will talk about how the shape of an enzyme is important for this function and how our body regulates the activity of enzymes. Before talking about reaction kinetics, it is helpful to quickly review some of the forces and interactions that will be at play when two molecules come together. Remember that there can be an attraction between two molecules, such as through hydrogen bonds or ionic bonds. Also, the hydrophobic effect causes polar and nonpolar molecules to separate from one another. Many of the reactions in our body require two molecules to come together and rearrange their bonds. In order for a reaction to occur, the two molecules must contact each other in the right orientation. Think of it as shaking hands. You need to face somebody when you shake their hand. You cannot perform a handshake if you are behind them. You need to be in the correct orientation. To really understand the mechanism and the timing of how molecules react, it would be great if we could shrink ourselves down to the size of the molecules. But since we can't do that, we'll have to do the next best thing and imagine the molecules as our size or as the size of two people. Molecules in a solution or in our cells are always in motion, bumping into each other. They usually move around and bump into each other or bump into other things at random. Let's imagine a room with two people and these two people will be blindfolded. These people and their behavior will represent our two molecules. They will have to put out one arm and walk around the room randomly trying to get a handshake from the other per person. The handshake is the reaction in which the two molecules combine. It could take them a long time to find each other through random motion and actually bump into each other in the correct orientation to successfully shake hands. There are several ways we can get this reaction or this handshake to happen quicker. One way would be to get the two people to move around faster. They would still bump into each other or bump into other things in a random fashion, but the handshake would occur quicker. Likewise, we could speed up a chemical reaction by speeding up the motion of the molecules. This is equivalent to increasing the temperature. Remember that temperature or heat energy is simply random kinetic energy, and with an increase in temperature, comes an increase in the speed at which different molecules are moving. Another way to speed up a reaction is to use something that helps hold the molecules in the right position or orientation. In our analogy of the two people walking around the room blindfolded, if a third person was there and could hold them in place in the correct orientation, the handshake would happen much quicker. This third person is acting as a catalyst or enzyme. It is taking two or more molecules and holding them in the correct orientation for reaction to happen. It's sort of like a molecular group hug. In fact, the hug is a pretty good analogy for this activity since the enzyme usually squeezes the other two molecules together a bit. In terms of reaction kinetics and thermodynamics, Catalysts and enzymes act to lower the activation energy barrier. They do not change how much energy is released in the final products, for example, but they do make the reaction happen quicker. So how do act enzymes actually do this? These enzymes bring the reactive molecules, known as substrates, together in the correct orientation. They also can sometimes apply 
a small amount of pressure on these molecules to get the reaction to happen even faster. However, the enzymes themselves are not altered by the reaction. And after they have catalyzed one reaction, they could release the product and bind additional substrate molecules. A single enzyme can carry out or turn over many reactions, one after the other. In fact, a typical enzyme could make a reaction occur 10,000 times faster, or maybe even 100 times faster, 100,000 times faster. Again, this ability all depends upon the enzyme's ability to bind and position substrate molecules. Just like the person assisting the handshake by giving a big group hug, this activity depends upon the shape of the enzyme. It's very hard to give a group hug if you're missing an arm, for example. Again, demonstrating how the shape or the structure relates to the function. Enzymes are a very important example of the relationship between structure and function in biology. Most of the enzymes in our bodies are proteins. These proteins are simply a chain of amino acid subunits linked together, which then fold into a particular shape. These shapes have some flexibility, but it is the protein's unique shape that allows it to bind certain substrate molecules and act as an enzyme. Another way to think of this point is that the enzyme has a pocket or a binding site that will only fit a certain substrate molecule. Many enzymes are specific and only allow a few different types or maybe only one type of molecule into this pocket, which is also known as the active site. There are some everyday objects with similarity to this specific nature of an enzyme. For example, a baseball mitt can easily catch and hold on to a baseball or a softball, but it's not very good for catching a football. The binding pocket of the baseball mitt is specifically shaped and suited for a certain kind of ball. This same principle can be seen with an enzyme, such as pepsin, an enzyme in our digestive system. This enzyme is responsible for catalyzing the breakdown of some of the food we eat. The pocket of the pepsin en enzyme can bind certain parts of a food molecule, here shown in green, and by binding this molecule it can catalyze or speed up the decomposition reaction that splits the molecule in two. Remember that a decomposition reaction can also be known as a catabolic reaction. You could also notice that the enzyme shape is much larger than simply the active site pocket. There are several reasons for this, one of which being that many different parts of the protein must interact with each other in order to give it that particular shape. Many enzymes squeeze or bind or hug their substrates rather tightly. The substrate doesn't simply plug into the enzyme but rather the enzyme closes around it after the substrate has bound into the pocket. Think about the softball mitt again. The ball doesn't just sit in the middle of the glove, but rather the glove is usually closed around it for a tighter grip once the ball is caught. This hugging or squeezing, known in biology as the induced fit theory for substrate binding, is also thought to provide additional stress on the substrate and the bonds that are going to be altered in the chemical reaction. Induced fit also places the substrate in the optimal position for the reaction. The forces that act upon molecules that we discussed at the beginning of this video, such as ionic interactions and the hydrophobic effect, are responsible for giving the protein or the enzyme its particular shape and are also responsible for encouraging the tighter fit between substrate and enzyme act 
active site. Enzymes cannot speed up a reaction if they can't bind their substrate. This fact is actually the basis for many different dr drugs which act to block or change the substrate binding pocket of a specific enzyme. The drug usually has a shape similar to the substrate, and the drug can bind the active site pocket, but it will not participate in a reaction. These drugs, which compete with the substrate for the active site, are known as competitive inhibitors. Aspirin, shown here, is a common everyday example of this. Aspirin, which is shown on the left, is a competitive inhibitor of an enzyme abbreviated COX. This enzyme normally binds arachidonic acid, shown on the right, and catalyzes a reaction that ultimately, ultimately leads to an inflammation response. Aspirin can bind the active site, blocking arachidonic acid from interacting with the COX enzyme. Effectively, aspirin shuts down this reaction. Sometimes, a molecule can affect the activity of an enzyme by binding somewhere other than the substrate binding pocket. Drugs that slow down enzymes this way are known as non-competitive inhibitors because they can change the enzyme's shape and the enzyme's activity without directly competing with the substrate for the active site. The non-competitive inhibitor will bind to another part of the enzyme, known as the allosteric site. This binding nonetheless can affect the overall shape of the enzyme. Our own body uses this strategy to either slow down or speed up enzyme activity naturally. Together, these enzymes and proteins form molecular machines that carry out virtually all the chemical reactions in our cells. There are many examples of this, including for myosin, a long thread-like protein with a barbed end that is responsible for muscle movement. In response to a molecule binding to a particular spot on myosin, a shape or conformation change take place, takes place that produces movement. There are countless other examples in our body with the energy generating molecular water wheel ATP synth synthetase and the molecular Xerox machine DNA polymerase also shown here. It would take many more videos to fully explain the details behind how they work and what they do, but these enzymes all have a few things in common. There is almost nothing that happens in our body without some enzyme or protein being involved. All of these enzymes are responsible for making the reactions in our body occur quick enough to make life possible. Furthermore, all of the activities and functions of these proteins and enzymes are dependent on their three-dimensional shape and structure. Anything that changes this fold or conformation has the potential to alter the function of the enzyme, either enhancing it or more likely impairing it. 